You are now listening to Shia, the Era of Our Female-Led Society, a dramatic fiction audiobook series written by Tierica the Oracle, presented by FemaleLedSociety.org. Chapter 4 Glory and her personal team arrives early Monday morning in Soar, America, to meet with Shia Magdalene's team and be brought up to speed about their progress. There has been no precedent for dealing with the death of a world leader while in office. However, Shia Gloria had set procedures in place just in case. If a Shia was to transition while in office, Gloria would take over her position until a suitable replacement was found. The only eligible candidates would come from the aristocrats but even they had to be nominated by a Shia in order to be considered. Glory kept homes in each community so that she always had a place to live when she visited. As her personal team, her keeper and attendants all traveled with her. The house staff was on call whenever she would visit. After her arrival and refreshment, Glory headed over to the office of the community Shia of Sora America. She met Shia Magdalene's keeper, Andrew, and other key members of her staff. She was informed that there were no key issues that needed to be resolved because Shia Magdalene ran such a tight ship. Her community's GSL number stood firmly at 87%. GSL stands for General Satisfaction Level. General citizens are polled twice a year to determine how satisfied they are with their quality of life. If the numbers ever dip below 75%, the community Shia is placed on a warning to correct any issues or be replaced. Shia Supreme Glory is known to do personal polling where she calls impromptu meetings with the general citizens to hear their concerns and opinions about their quality of life. Public servants were always on hand to listen to the concerns of the people and Glory felt that nothing she would hear at the meeting should should be a surprise. In our female-led society, each citizen is given housing stipends, hence there are no homeless citizens. Each citizen is given health care at no cost. Each citizen participates in our community by playing a role they are assigned to according to their interests and skills. These are their assigned jobs. Each job receives exactly the same pay, whether they're a doctor or a janitor. If a citizen shares that they are dissatisfied with their assigned role, they are evaluated by a maven for a career change or assigned to spend time with a light worker to identify the underlying emotional issue that has led to their dissatisfaction. Our FLS has only one elected position in each community. These are the votics. Votics are similar to old world judges. Every five years, the communities elect the women and men they want to judge their issues and concerns. There are no lawsuits. The votics determine who is right and wrong and their decisions are final. The votics appoint the mavens, which are the people who help general citizens choose their community roles, and the mavens appoint the light workers who are the counselors for the general citizens. All community roles are designed to give the general citizens a sense of value and to allow them to afford to enjoy their lives. Glory gives her keeper, Cameron, instructions to collect three aristocrat nominations from the seven, from the six community shias for possible replacements for Soar America. From these nominations, she will choose three individuals to be evaluated over an eight-week period. The next community Shia will be appointed at that time. Cameron runs to share the news and the office buzzes with excitement. Everybody's wondering who their next boss will be. Glory smiles to herself as a shiver of joy runs up her spine. You know what? I will announce the three candidates this weekend at the Aristocrats Gala. He's here, Rain squeals and runs to open the door of her hotel room. As soon as she does, she is greeted by the warmest smile and outstretched arms. She quickly runs into his arms and he spins her around. Mr. Peters, rainy baby. (laughs) Oh, Mr. Peters, it's been so long. I'm so glad you could make it. 
How could I turn down a chance to escort my superstar student to the aristocrats ball? I still can't believe you thought of me. What? You're still not interested in boys yet, little girl? Rain laughed. Boys are cool, but I always admired you and you are, and appreciated you for being so encouraging to me. I remember when I was 14 and I told you that I wanted to be a Shia. You said, how can I help? That meant so much to me, Mr. Peters. Oh, Rainy Baby, I meant every word. And look, you're well on your way. An aristocrat already? You're one of them and you deserve it. Thank you, Rainy says. Now let's get going. I like to arrive early to see what's going on behind the scenes. Wow, Rain is impressed by the Asian inspired decor of the small venue. She had only been to Asia twice in her life and she enjoyed seeing the cultural influence on the gala. Even though they set out to arrive early, it seems the other party guests have the same idea because there's a small crowd already there milling about. Soon, Shia Sunny, the Shia from Asia who is hosting the gala, takes the stage to welcome everyone to her community. She makes a few jokes, reminds everyone that drinks are on her, and then introduces the Shia Supreme. Shia Glory takes the stage and asks for a moment of silent appreciation for Shia Magdalene. After the moment of silence is done, Shia Glory says she has big news. Every person in this room is here to celebrate the brilliance of our amazing aristocrats. Glory announces. Each year we meet to mingle, dance, and toast our wonderful society that is only made possible by the ingenuity of these gifted individuals who have earned the distinction of aristocrat. This year's gala is a very special celebration. We are on target to fill the position of Shia Sur America, and the next community Shia will be one of you. The room explodes with applause. We have conferred with our current community Shias, and they have offered their best recommendations for who among you may be best suited for the position. Enjoy your gala, brilliant aristocrats. By the evening's end, three of you will be the top contenders to become a community Shia, one of the eight world leaders. A raucous cheer erupts, glasses clink, the band plays in the dance floor fields with excited aristocrats and their guests. Mr. Peters grins down at Rain, who is frozen in shock. Could be your time to shine, Rainy baby. Rain can't speak. She wouldn't dare to dream of it. She has only been an aristocrat for three years. It's not time for something so amazing. Not yet. She couldn't even get her hopes up. Her lifelong dream of being a Shia? It's not my time, Rain blurted out, blurts out, still in the daze. I'm not there yet. You never know, Mr. Peters encourages her. Come on, let's dance. As the pair head out onto the dance floor, Rain stops every few feet to introduce Mr. Peters to the other aristocrats. Mr. Peters is beyond impressed, but holding himself together very well. It is not often that general citizens get to party with the leadership class. Although the GC parties are lots of fun and highly memorable, intermixing the two rarely ever happens, which is why Rain enjoys bringing the special people from her past with her to get a taste of her new life in the leadership class. Mr. Peters is, highly, is a highly intelligent man with a great heart who taught her during her general studies as a youth. He could have gone on to join the leadership class, but he said he liked working with the children who would one day influence the nation. For that, Rain was grateful. Rain, how are you? A voice calls out. It's Glory, the Shia Supreme. She knows my name. Of course she does. Oh shit, answer. Shia Glory, it's an honor to see you. Rain composes herself and offers a curtsy. Oh, this is my former teacher, Mr. Peters. Mr. Peters, the Shia Supreme. I do recognize you, of course, Madam Shia, Mr. Peters says and bows. Please, call me Jonathan. My pleasure to meet you, Jonathan. Are you enjoying yourself? I sure am. Very grateful to Rain for inviting me, Jonathan says. I've known Rain for more than half of her life. I always knew she was someone special. In fact, from what I've seen of you during your leadership, she reminds me of you, if I may, may be so bold to say so. She of glory raises an eyebrow and laughs. At this moment, the band changes the tempo to a slower song. In the spur of the moment, Jonathan extends his hand to Shea Glory. Would you like to dance? 
Shia Glory looks over at Rain, who is beaming. Why, certainly, Jonathan. The pair head on over to the dance floor as onlookers gasp. Shia Glory chuckles. It's very rare for a man to be brave enough to interact with her. From her, from her experience, those who are so confident have lots to be confident about. They dance together, cheek to cheek. He holds her hand firmly against his chest. His other hand rests, rests lightly on her waist. He regales her with stories about his students, the knuckleheads and the class clowns. She or Glory laughs heartily, her breath warming his neck, giving him goosebumps. The song ends and Shia Glory takes a step back. Jonathan's hand lingers in hers. She laughs and pulls away. Another dance, he asks. Another time, she says, and turns to walk away. He stops her. Will I get to see you again? He asks sincerely. You might, she says, smiles at him and disappears into the crowd. Rain rushes over to Jonathan. You dance with the Shia Supreme? I know, Jonathan says and fumbles with his bow tie. She smelled great. <laughs> Just before midnight, the lights dim, and once again, Shia Sunny takes the stage. She thanks everyone for attending and invites them to join her the next day for brunch at her family's restaurant. Before we retire, Shia Glory has a few words, the words many of you have been waiting all night for. Shia Glory takes the stage and stands behind the podium. We are all very proud of your achievements, my dear aristocrats. We look forward to supporting your social programs and watching our society flourish under your leadership. Tonight, we have the privilege of choosing from among you our next community Shia to represent Sur America. There are three aristocrats whose work has been outstanding and represent the best of what our society has to offer. These three aristocrats will go through an eight-week review process to see who is best suited for the position of community Shia, one of the eight leaders of the world. All of the nominees are to be commended for being nominated by our current Shias. The audience applauds wildly. The three nominees for the next community Shia of Sur America are Eliza Anthony, Brian Parkinson, and Rain Kelly. The audience cheers and the band plays a celebratory tune. Andrew, Andrew hugs Rain and Jonathan does as well and she stands there in disbelief. Jonathan nudges Rain so that she can walk towards the stage to stand with the other nominees. Rain can barely breathe. She knows the crowd is cheering, but she can't hear a thing. She sees the lights flickering. She knows the applause is for her, yet everything is eerily quiet. She sees the other nominees standing with her, crying and laughing at the same time, but she cannot understand the emotions that she is feeling. Jonathan notices and stands near the stage to help her down. She stares up at him and he hugs her tightly. Dreams come true, Rainy. Someone has to do the job. Why can't it be you?